Broadcasting all over the world at urbanbroadcastmedia.com. Delivering love and inspiration 24-7. This is UBM Praise. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. From communion with the dead to pumpkins and pranks, Halloween is a patchwork holiday stitched together with cultural, religious, and occult traditions that span centuries. It all began with the Celts, a people whose culture had spread across Europe more than 2,000 years ago. October 31st was the day they celebrated the end of the harvest season in a festival called Sowen. That night also marked the Celtic New Year and was considered a time between years, a magical time when the ghost of the dead walked the earth. It was the time when the veil between death and life was supposed to be at its thinnest. On Samhain, the villagers gathered and lit huge bonfires to drive the dead back to the spirit world and keep them away from the living. But as the Catholic Church's influence grew in Europe, it frowned on the pagan rituals like Samhain. In the 7th century, the Vatican began to merge it with a church-sanctioned holiday. So November 1st was designated All Saints Day to honor martyrs and the deceased faithful. Both of these holidays had to do with the afterlife and about survival after death. It, it was a calculated move on the part of the church to bring more people into the fold. All Saints Day was known then as Hallamus. Hallow means holy or saintly. So the translation is roughly Mass of the Saints. The night before, October 31st, was All Hallows' Eve, which gradually morphed into Halloween. The holiday came to America with the wave of Irish immigrants during the potato famine of the 1840s. They brought several of their holiday customs with them, including bobbing for apples and playing tricks on neighbors, like removing gates from the front of houses. The young pranksters wore masks so they wouldn't be recognized. But over the years, the tradition of harmless tricks grew into outright vandalism. Back in the 1930s, it really became a dangerous uh, holiday. I mean, there was um, such uh, hooliganism and vandalism. Trick-or-treating was originally an extortion deal. Give us candy or we'll uh, trash your house. Storekeepers and neighbors began giving treats or bribes to stop the tricks and children were encouraged to travel door to door for treats as an alternative to troublemaking. By the late 30s, trick or treat became the holiday greeting. Let's go. Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? Sir Walter Jones. Who show is this? Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? Sir Walter Jones. One more again. Sir Walter Jones. The Sir Walter Jones Show with co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in which we tackle all the hot topics in the believer's walk. It's Fireside Friday. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and be encouraged in the Lord. find out which mics work okay <laughs> i feel like is he so distant he's just just distant this is sir walter jones and uh it's fireside friday where we uh close the phone lines and we try to see what's going on out there in um social media 
social media. That is you people on the Twitter feeds and uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and uh, LinkedIn and uh, Clairvoyant. <laughs> Not sure if that's even a. I'm, I just made that up, y'all. Um, it's so many of them. There are millions upon millions of people who are out there. Um, um, they are interacting with others through social media, and it, it's you know we never did see this coming years ago. You know the internet came on the scene. I know some of you think that the internet came on the scene, you know, in the uh, in the late '90s or the middle '90s, or what have you. I remember trying to sign on with that uh, that bzzz, <laughs> that modem, uh, and they changed so many. Uh, the, the speeds of it and call it bought rates and all all of these things uh but the internet didn't come around in the nineties it actually came around a long time it was around in the nineteen i think nineteen sixty nine or something like that nineteen seventy when the internet actually got its start and the colleges and the universities were using it uh and uh and then uh we and so that was that was you know a couple of decades before it even got into the public uh face uh and so now uh, we seem to not be able to live without the internet. It's really, it's absolutely amazing how what something that we never had before. If we didn't rely on it, we all interacted with, through our, tel- our our uh, before cell phones. It was the telephone at home. There was no call ID, uh, and uh, we interacted and we knew everybody's phone numbers. You could remember 10, 15 phone numbers. It's amazing how we, we had that in our brains. Um, and uh, But again, when the phone rang, you had to pick it up because, again, you didn't know who it was. There was no ID. Uh, and then you went outside if you wanted to interact with anybody. You got you got in your car or you got on the bus or you walked to your friend's house. And that was our social media. Um, we got lazy. Uh, something happened where well when technology enter into our homes then it, it it does affect us socially the video games came on the scene atari and, and uh, pong and um space invaders and centipede and millipede and you name it all these shows all these uh games came into our homes and then what happened was the kids stopped going outside to play uh they start they stayed at home and then their their thumbs became the uh their way of uh, communicating <laughs> pew pew that was the language of the youth pew pew <laughs> okay uh and then uh, the internet came on the scene and we were the, the gamers didn't change they they just got faster uh and uh, now it's it's hard fetched to catch kids outside playing uh like they used to because they're inside um uh, then we had um we have um, our, our iPhones and, and, and pads and uh, cell phones gave us the ability to leave the house and we could uh, socialize with people. So it's you sit there at a the restaurant. You go to a restaurant and sit there. There'll be four people sitting at the booth at a restaurant and all four of them are on their cell phones or on their pads. Now that's where America has gone. Not just America, I mean, it's in other countries, but especially here. Uh, we don't. Even, we're not even talking to each other. We're on our our devices at the table. It's amazing, and so that's where it is. And it's, it's kind of dumbed us down. And and it's it. And some of us got a little smarter because now we have a worldwide of intelligence out there. We at the at the uh, strike of a keyboard key, we can get all the information we ever wanted and needed in life. Um, and so that's through Wikipedia and Google and all these other search search engines. Uh, and so when we talk about a lot of these topics, there is should be no more excuse for anybody to be ignorant to any topic in the world because we have a wealth of knowledge uh, that's readily available to us on uh, on um, not on just on social media but on the internet. Uh, and you just type in whatever you need, and there it is. Unfortunately, though, when a lazy person is lazy in no matter. St- what no matter what his state is no matter where he is he's lazy so you can put a million dollars in his face and he'll just say i got a million dollars but he won't do anything with it you take it away from him he's still in that same state and that's just the way it is you can't force anyone to gain any knowledge they have to do it on them on, on their own uh so our show is uh we we developed our show 
to talk about issues, talk about topics that um, the, the Christian community either don't want to talk about or they know nothing about or they're afraid to talk about it. So we've had, you know, some wild subjects. And it, it's been about a month now since we've been on the air on at this station, at least. And um, the Lord has blessed us to um, not just hold on to our listening audience, but also we have uh, it gets broader and, and, and broader and broader and not just broader, but we get more and more people listening in. So we thank God. Uh, and for those who are uh, listening in live, I, I want to thank you. And then there are those who are listening to the rebroadcast, which is on Spreaker dot com and, and the stats on Spreaker is just uh, just amazing. Our our number one show now uh, for the month since we've we've been on for one whole month, I think today might be. Uh, uh, either today or Monday might be the entire make the month was our show on Tuesday Pink Perspective it was a show where we had uh, Tamara Mills to come in and she talked about how uh, she uh, lived a lesbian lifestyle that is now our number one show uh, and I get the uh, stats um, online each day and you matter of fact I, 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 I walked in the studio and they were playing the rebroadcast so uh, you guys have been listening to the Sir Walter Jones show for four will be for four hours and by the time it's six o'clock central it'll be four hours of Sir Walter programming so they might as well change the name of urban broadcast media to the Sir Walter Jones media <laughs> I'll take it CZ my engineer is here she's ready to go <laughs> and she's um giving me all of the sound that I need and I thank God for her uh, D he works here Monday through Thursday and uh, all those special effects you hear that's Dion that's the man he's he's the man but I tell you we have uh the next best thing to be in there CC uh today's topic is we're talking about now this is Halloween y'all Halloween Hallows Eve or sometimes it's uh, depending on who's calling it it's all Saints Day and it's Halloween and there's always this this battle, this struggle be- between good and evil. Um, you know, God establishes something and the devil wants to take it. He wants to be a part of it. Not sure. Well, I, I am sure why. There's, there's a lot of jealousy from the very beginning, from the inception of time when Lucifer was in heaven. He always wanted to be above God. And, and so ever since he's got kicked down out of the, out of the heavens, down to the earthly realm, uh, he's want to emulate God in everything that he does. So Facebook is chiming in here, and I've asked the question: Will you guys will be joining your harvest fests or your hallelujah parties tonight? Uh, there's a lot of those going on, and uh, I, I see uh, you here on uh, social media, Den- Denise Latoya, and I see Natalie, I see Elder Sharon Jett. I see Michelle Thomas. I sound like a romper room. And I see a Bronia Scott. And I see <laughs> Natasha Miles. I see y'all. I see y'all. She says, uh, don't nobody want to talk to you, Sir Walter. <laughs> Natasha Miles. She goes to my church, by the way, y'all. Uh, and uh, pray for her. Because, uh, uh, well, I, I'm not going to say it on the air. <laughs> I'm not going to say it on the air. Um, um, let's see yeah so they're chiming in so let's let's go to our notes here uh you know y- y- y'all it seemed like i'm riding a solo today i i'm kind of riding solo today it's friday and it's snowing outside it's it's actually sleet or whatever that's called uh and it's confusing us this weather in chicago is very confusing uh but it's now we're now deep into fall heading into winter and so it, it it this happens, y'all. If you live in Chicago, this happens. <laughs> okay, so don't be surprised and shocked. Oh my God, it's cold in Chicago. It will be cold. Uh, Alvin will be joining us in a minute, and uh, I think my brother Art, he's on the way as well. And uh, we're just going to chime in on this Halloween versus. I call it the topic: Halloween and ghosts versus ha- Hallelujah and and angels. Okay, now. Let let's sit back and chat, okay? Uh this this being Fireside Friday. Um and the reason why we called it that is because I like I like history channel. I watch a lot of history and uh I like to uh, look at find out what's going on with the presidents back in the day. Um and one of my favorite presidents is FDR, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he, what he would do, he would sit he would uh this was radio was kind of fresh at the time and he would inform 
the United States on what's going on in, around the world and in America. And he would sit by. At that time, they didn't. They had televisions, yes, but a lot of Americans.